AMD's RX 7800 XT has just hit store shelves, reviews are out, and it's gotten the community pretty divided on whether this card is actually good or not. This has to be one of the most discordant launches I've seen in quite a while, and there can be cases made for both sides. Along with that, Navi32 has me very intrigued with how it's scaling. So we're going to be talking about that in this video to see if this card is worth your money. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Dandy here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. The RX 7800 XT is finally available and taking a look at a wide variety of reviews, it seems as though it does perform a bit better than I was expecting. In my previous video, I had looked at benchmark numbers for the RX 7900 GRE and that GPU was barely faster than an RX 6800 XT. It was more in line with the RX 6900 XT where the gap wasn't that big to begin with. When you compare the specs of the RX 7900 GRE to the newly released released RX 7800 XT, there is a pretty big reduction with what's being offered. We're looking at a reduction of around 25% less shaders. However, the amount of VRAM you get is the same and also the memory bus width is also the same. Furthermore, the RX 7800 XT does come clocked considerably higher out of the box. Now if we're to take a look at the review from Hardware Unboxed, who have also included the 7900 GRE, we can see that on average there is a 5% difference at 1440p, which really isn't a whole lot when you look at the FPS numbers. It's a negligible difference and you won't notice it. That answers that question a lot of people had which was why they weren't getting an RX 7900 GRE released for the DIY market globally. It's because the RX 7800 XT would have made it look really stupid. Now before we continue on with the discussion surrounding the RX 7800 XT, I just wanted to talk quickly about the RX 7700 XT and just get that card quickly out of the way as my opinion of this card hasn't really changed and that's a shame because after taking Taking a look at the benchmarks for this card, I think AMD shot themselves badly in the foot because they wanted to be greedy. Had the RX 7800 XT come out at 399, then this would have been an absolute banger of a GPU. Just taking a look at Tech Power Up's review of this card, and we can see at 1080p and 1440p on average, it's a bit ahead of the RX 6800 non XT and seems to have some decent overclocking headroom and can provide performance comparable to the RX 6800 XT. So if it was $400 or even $420, then this would have been a GPU that would have gotten my recommendation if you're looking for a decent mid-range new card. It would have absolutely embarrassed the RTX 4060 Ti. Unfortunately though, at its current price, you're better off just paying the extra $50 and getting the 7800 XT like AMD wanted in the end. So it's being used as an upsell product rather than being priced competitively to create something compelling here. What a missed opportunity. Then again, this is AMD. But if you're patient, give it a few months, by this holiday season, I can see the RX 7700 XT dropping down to around that $400 mark, so when it does, then yeah, I'll be happily recommending it. Now circling back to the RX 7800 XT, I'm sure most of you guys have seen a few different reviews on the site and other places online already, so I'm not really going to go into too much detail in regards to how it performs, but just taking a look at a few benchmarks from various outlets, Tech Power Up on their site have reviewed multiple models including the reference one, so I recommend checking their site out, and they found it performs right alongside cards like the RTX 3080, the 6800 XT, and 6900 XT. Hardware Unboxed on their review came to the same conclusion, when it comes to raster performance that is, it performs right alongside the 3080 and 6800 XT. Computerbase, who are a German hardware site, found the same thing, RTX 3080 or RX 6800 XT like performance. So I'll admit I was wrong, this card, and so did the 7700 XT for that matter, ended up exceeding my expectations. I was expecting the 7800 XT to perform between an RX 6800 and 6800 XT, but it's sitting between an RX 6800 XT and 6900 XT, but in this case I am very much glad I was wrong. Now the RX 6800 XT or RTX 3080, that level of performance is by no means bad, especially if you're just gaming at 1080p or 1440p, it's definitely respectable. The issue, or rather where people are divided, depends on which angle you look at this card from. So if you compare the RX 7800 XT to other current gen offerings from NVIDIA like the RTX 4060 Ti 16GB 
or the RTX 4070, it offers pretty good value. Because in raster performance, it's giving you the performance that's comparable to the 4070 that goes for around $100 more, if not greater, if you buy a premium AIB model, but it costs the same as an RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte, but absolutely stomps it. When it comes to ray tracing, the tables are turned in favor of the RTX 4070, but considering a lot of people at this price range aren't using ray tracing as much, it's not that big of a selling point. Nvidia does also have the better upscaler and along with that they also offer frame generation which AMD have yet to release their comparable feature to the public. So if you care about these kinds of features I suppose an argument can be made to pay the extra $100 premium for the 4070. However if you don't care about all of that then in my opinion the RX 7800 XT is the clear choice here. Where the problem starts though which I pointed out in my last video and this was something that was pointed out pretty well by GN in their review is that compared to last gen 6000 series parts or the 30 series they really aren't moving or advancing the market in a positive direction. Sure, the RX 6800 XT launched at a higher price, but you really can't compare it to an MSRP from nearly three years ago, but you have to compare it to what the card goes for today and what other competing cards like the 3080 go for, which, you know, can be seen on the used market for around $400 or less. Definitely an embarrassing showing as compared to the 6800 XT though, which is, again, about the same price right now, so... We'd just say buy that instead if you can, if you're shopping at this price class. It's a good guard. Now, our main concern with the 78XD has been that underperformance versus the 6000 series. It's just it's underperforming versus what the naming would suggest. And we saw that with the 4060 Ti versus the 3060 Ti. Yeah, the problem, it comes down to marketing. They want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to be able to call it a higher-end card than it is, but they don't want to make it a higher-end card. They just want the money for it. Um, so, you know, this one... <laughs> It's at least positioned competitively worth with NVIDIA right now. That's the thing that we like about it. It becomes blatantly obvious that AMD are charging a much higher price for what this card really should cost, simply because everything else in the market that's new is also severely overpriced. Nerdtechgasm on Twitter summed it up perfectly, because we're dealing with a duopoly here, what really should be mainstream or economical cards are being sold for as higher and mid-range options. Neither company is actually competing here to push prices down. If AMD really were in this game to compete, then the 7800X would have been called an RX 7800 or 7700 XT and would have sold for around $400 and the 7700 XT should have been called an RX 7700 and sold for around $329. So ultimately what it comes down to is this. You compare it against new latest gen options then it looks like a pretty decent value card. I think this is what happened with the outlets that gave it a positive review. On the other hand when you compare it against last gen cards then you see market stagnation and poor value. However I can understand that depending on where you you are in the world then going with a new card might be a better option as opposed to used. People on tech forums, reviewers, and hardware sites can make all the negative reviews that they want, but unless consumers don't actually start to vote with their wallet, then not a whole lot is going to change and it's going to become worse because it's a positive signal for these companies that hey no matter what we do they're still gonna buy it. I was reading the comments on places like reddit and if you were to go by based on what people were saying on those threads then you'd think the 7800 XT wouldn't sell. Well here in Canada over on amazon.ca the RX 7800 XT became the number one best selling product in the graphics card category. Hopping on over to newegg.com and you can see a lot of these RX 7800 XTs are out of stock but that really shouldn't come as a surprise given what we just talked about. A lot of people weren't happy with Nvidia's grossly overpriced cards and went, well, these ones aren't as badly overpriced, so I guess that's better than nothing. Another incentive for consumers was probably Starfield. If you were in the market for a new GPU anyways, and you were also interested in buying Starfield, you could think of it as another discount, so a $500 GPU is now $430. All in all, the release of AMD's RX 7800 XT has undoubtedly stirred up the gaming community, leaving us with a divided opinion on its worthiness. As we've seen from the reviews, this card does perform better than expected. It stands as a competitive choice, particularly when compared to some of Nvidia's latest offerings, delivering robust raster performance and excellent value for gamers who prioritize gaming performance over ray tracing and additional features. However, the real debate emerges when we look beyond the present and consider the broader market context. The stagnant price levels and the absence of aggressive competition between the two major GPU manufacturers raises question about whether we are truly moving forward. While the 7800 XT may shine in the current market, 
the fact that it's being considered a value option at its price point reflects the larger issues of the escalating GPU costs. Ultimately, the power to drive change lies in the hands of consumers. While negative reviews and discussions may echo across forums and social media, the real signal comes from your choices as consumers. As long as the demand remains high, manufacturers will continue to set prices accordingly. So as we move forward in this ever-evolving GPU landscape, remember that your purchasing decisions have the potential to shape the market. Only when consumers collectively demand more reasonable pricing will the industry respond with change. However, until then, expect products which only aim to inflate profit margins. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.